So we've just done the differentiate. Now comes part two. Hence, and that word is really important, whenever you see it in an HSC question, it means you must use the thing that you just did. Sometimes you'll get hence or otherwise, which means here's a clue, but you can do it however way you'd like. When you see hence and no other qualification, your next line pretty much has to use this, right? Or at least eventually you have to use it. So what am I gonna do here? I want this thing. Sorry, I got the power on the first time. Have a look at it and have a look at how similar it is to this object we've ended up with. See how similar it is? What's the difference? They're not exactly the same. What's the difference? The three and the two. These are the only differences, okay? And they're just a constant coefficient. So this is fine, I can deal with this. If I want something that's like the integral of this, then all I'm gonna do, I'm gonna rewrite this on the left-hand side, is I'm gonna treat this like an equation and just like since year seven when you first met them. If you do one, something to one side of the equation, you just do it to the other. If you multiply by two, or you add one, or you take logs of both sides, I can integrate both sides, okay? So, I'm just going to write it just the way you see it. That there is everything that was on the left-hand side before, the derivative of this. I'm integrating, but, well, what variable should I integrate with respect to? Not a trick question, have a look. The only variable I have is x's, so I'm going to integrate with respect to x. Is that okay? On the right hand side, I'm also going to integrate, and I have to do it just the same way I did on the left, so I'm going to get this. Is that looking okay? Alright, now, have a look at the left hand side. You're differentiating and then you're also integrating at the same time. This is a little bit like doubling something and then halving it with a subtle difference. I should end up back where I started, yeah? I should end up back where I started. But it's not quite like doubling and halving, which gives you back exactly what you started with. When you integrate and you have an indefinite integral, something else comes along for the ride. Why does this appear mysteriously? Think about it. The reason it appears is because any of these guys, like this guy, or like this guy, or like this guy, any of them could differentiate to get back to here. Okay? So therefore, in this case, you don't necessarily get back to that one, you get back to him or any of his buddies. Does that make sense? So I've integrated on the left-hand side. Okay, on the right-hand side. Bye. I'm going to take that 3 over 2 out the front. It's just the constant coefficient, yeah? Okay. You alright with that? Does it look okay? I haven't done anything too dramatic. Now, I'm so close to getting my answer. So close. Have a look back at what we wanted. And have a look at what we've got. What's the difference? It's just the 3 over 2. Now, I don't want the 3 over 2 there. So can you tell me what operation I can do that will get rid of the 3 over 2? I could just divide both sides by 3 over 2. If there was a 5 there, I'd divide both sides by 5. Or if there was whatever, right? So if I, mm, dividing by 3 over 2 fractions, I'm going to multiply by something instead because my brain likes multiplication better. I'm going to multiply by 2 thirds. Is that okay? That will have the same effect, won't it? I just did it to one side, so better do it to the other. You okay with that? Look alright? Um, cancel, 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 cancel. Really, this is it, right? So I guess I should tidy everything up. The original question, integral of, etc., etc. And then what you end up with is this, two thirds square root plus c. Okay, now, what do you think? How's your brain going? We know how to differentiate. By doing this first step, you can integrate some things that otherwise would be impractical or look just confusing, okay? And you will get this style of question quite a bit. Now, the astute among you should notice, I did something slightly dodgy. 
it's okay. I'm going to justify why. In fact, maybe you can justify why it's okay. But I wonder if anyone spotted it. It was on this line, this one here. Something was just slightly off. There's a reason why it's okay, but can you work out what's going on? Michael, what do you say? Yeah, so you remember, why did I multiply the right-hand side by 2 and 3? Why did I do that? To, because I didn't want the 3 on 2 there. So that's fine, we know what happened over there. And all of this thing that we multiply by is just one object. No problem. But then when I snuck it in over here, I, I cheekily didn't write it here. Okay. Now you tell me, why is it actually okay? This is actually literally the answer you will find for question 6a in this exercise. Why is it okay? So yeah, th this guy here, right? This guy here. Um, if you wanted to be super ultra pedantic about it, seeing how it doesn't appear anywhere and then suddenly, ah, it's like a, a wild sea appeared, okay? You really should say what it is. So here it is. The most succinct way to introduce it is to just say, hey, look, C is not just a random letter, it's a real number. This is just fancy set notation for saying that. Um, if you wanted to be longer about it, you'd say where C is any real number. Okay, but two thirds times a real number is still a real number. So what I had before still works just fine. And this is exactly what you'll see. You don't need to say two thirds times C because that's still C. Okay.